Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to try to stay stay on on the subject. So we usually have these big signs because there's three there's three lines that are mostly like like really important for us all to know and to practice like Alicia was saying. And also I think uh, practice works really well when we get our mouths and our bodies, every cell of our body used to saying certain things, so that when it is like scary or stressful, that it comes out really naturally. Uh, if you compare it to like, if you know how to swim and then you get thrown in the water, you'll automatically start paddling, but if you haven't done that, then you'll panic and whatever. So we want to get our bodies used to saying these things. So when we say them, we're inviting everybody to say them out loud too. All right. So we usually have these big signs that you can have to do here. Um, am I free to go? 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 Um, other magic. These are these are like probably they're all magic. I choose to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. I choose to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. I choose to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. I choose to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. Okay, let's try one more time. I choose to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. I choose to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. And of course, we don't have to scream it. I'm just trying to get us excited about it. Um, I do not consent to a search. 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 Right on. So maybe we could go around really um, quickly. There's a good, good crew of us here and say um, our name or what we want to be called right here today. And just briefly say one situation where people encounter cops, cops of some sort. And if you could, don't don't tell a long story. I'll, I'll give you an example. My name is Verbena. People encounter cops when they're sleeping on public property. All right, so my name is Sarah. People encounter cops when they are demonstrating something. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, people, um, what was the second word? Encounter. Encounter cop, uh, right after there's an accident, like a traffic My name is Jim, and people encounter cops down on the waterfront when they're watching the birds. I'm Hans, and police encounter cops. What's that? When they encounter cops in the 
hitchhiking out of town. That's right. <laughs> Which does.
they can go to jail after they've been in the victim. So we do support, support <laughs> and strategizing how to deal with that in the best way and not get in more trouble. Um, and we also support protests um, and, and, and document what's going on. We have websites. I mean, uh, we do have a website. We put a lot of stuff up. Do some work around um, political prisoners. Um, what rights do I have? So I'm going to kind of like, we're going to go through some of these and then take a break. And if somebody needs a break, we can do that too. And then we have um, a little film. So when we come back from the break, we'll try to get through these and um, You have the right to remain silent. Every person, even a person on parole or probation, so I'll say that again, every person, even if you're on parole or probation, has the right not to answer questions or even talk to a police officer or other government agent. And the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is where that's said. That's a really fundamental, big thing that you always have the right to not say something to a cop. The right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. That includes seizures of your body, and seizures of your stuff, um, and, and looking into your fluids or things like that. So the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Without a warrant, cops or government agents may not search your home or your office without your consent, and you have the right to refuse to let them in. Um, they can only enter and search without a warrant in an emergency or if you let them in. So I kind of want to talk about this. Um, if you don't say, well, we had the magic words, I do not consent to a search. 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 Practice saying it because if you don't say those things, then your silence as far as not a search, if you don't assert that right, consented but the crazy thing that we figure out after a while is the more cops the more um, scary the cops get because they're trying to get you to give your permission so a cop comes up and says I want you to open up that trunk right now and you say I do not consent to a search and they say well I want you to do it anyway or I'm gonna you know I'm gonna put you in that jail and you're, you're not gonna see so and so for the next two weeks the more intimidating they get you know that they need you to give them that permission. If they can come up and they have the right to, to get, go into your trunk, they'll just do it. So know that you're actually, when you assert your rights and the cops tries to get scarier, it's only because they've hit a wall with you. If you haven't just opened up your trunk and said, okay, well I guess you scared me enough or you probably have the legal right or whatever. So the more scary they get, it's sort of a reverse understanding. The more scary they get, the less likely it is they have a right to do it without your permission. Does that, does that make sense? They're begging you to give them permission and you don't ever give them consent. So can we say that if you got a couple more times like I love I do not consent to a search. 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 We'll try and say it more. Um, now this this has this this little thing, and like I said, we talk more about what our rights are. So let's say you really think that cop has the right to do something. Still say, I do not consent to a search. I do not consent to a search. You don't want to have to know all that stuff. You just say you're lying. That's it. Um, they can only enter and search without a warrant in an emergency or if you let them in. Most of the ways that cops get into people's houses, into their cars, into people's backpacks, into their pockets is because people either don't say anything and the cop says, so you don't mind if I go in your car, right? And the person goes, 
and they go, okay, thanks, but you have to say, I do not consent. And, and, and people just dump their pockets out because the cop orders them to. They don't, you don't have to do that. You always say, I do not consent. The emergency thing is pretty rare. And the cops will try to say, they'll lie, cops lie, we forgot to say that. That's the main thing for us to remember. It is not to be mean about the cops. It is not um, uh, like calling them names or whatever. It is just the truth. It is their training to lie. It is their training to manipulate and lie so that you um, say certain things or give up your rights or do certain things so that they can have more um, people that, that the system can prosecute. So it's really important. We can say that too because it's important for us to know it. Cops lie. 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 If they got manuals in it, they get trained in it. And the reason that I say we say it out loud is because because we're all kind of like, most of us are pretty trustworthy humans. And so when we deal with somebody, we're like, well, he was pretty nice, or she was pretty nice cop, you know. And so we just thought they were just, you know, chatting it up with us, or recognized me because they knew my mom, or something like that. And you've got to remember that cops lie. And whenever a cop is talking to you, they are working, which means that their job is to get people arrested, or get you or somebody you know arrested, and put them through the system. So when they are talking to you, that is an interrogation. Interrogation is not fancy. It doesn't necessarily mean you're in a room with cigarettes and mean-looking guys. Interrogation is, hey, how you doing? That's from a cop. So you always want to assert your rights right away. Just know that otherwise you are volunteering to be part of their in investigation and interrogation. And even if you're a witness to something, and you want to be a witness, and you want to answer questions at some point or tell what you saw, I promise you, don't do it by just having a cop walk up and ask you, because you will be unhappy with what they do to with what you said. I, I've never met anybody who was pleased with the witness. They, 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 they told some cop a statement, and then it, they were all happy about how the cop dealt with it. They always twist it, and they always do it in a way that people don't like. So, you always have the right to remain silent, always, and you should assert that one. So, um, and we can talk more about like specific situations where cops say knock on your door, things like that. We'll talk about that. You have the right to watch and film cops. The right to watch is protected activity. You have the right to videotape despite what cops may tell you because cops lie. Cops are, if the cops are in a public space or any government agent, if they are in a public space, then they don't have what the law calls a reasonable expectation of privacy. In fact, none of us do. If we're in a public space, somebody can film us. Um, cops is the same. And, um, and the other thing is if you, let's say a cop is on your neighbor's property or you're just walking by and a cop is on private property, but you can see them from the sidewalk. You can film them. They don't have, you don't have to determine, well, that's public, well, that's private. If you can see them and you're on public property, then, then they don't have any expectation of privacy and you have a right to film them. Um, and they will lie to you and tell you that you can't do that and, and all that. And we also, uh, Probably we'll get into it a little bit, but we also do cop watch trainings, which are just about kind of how to deal with when you want to film cops, when you witness an, uh, a police encounter and you want to keep your eyes on it. Um, we also we also throw through this in here. If people, if other people are allowed to walk by, then you too can stop watching film. So. <coughs> The reason we put that in there is because if let's say let's say the cops came up here and you know people are walking by and they're like they're messing with me or something, right? People are walking by and everything and, and then Sarah comes up and she's got her camera. So everybody's like doing their thing but they don't like the camera. So they say to Sarah, You can't you better get back there on the corner. She knows it doesn't mean she's going to start battling with them, but she knows that she has the right to walk where everybody else is walking, whether she has a camera up or not, and that they're just doing that because they don't want to be them. Right. 
And we usually say we're just observing, we're not interfering. We're just observing. And um, um, people, you know, you don't want to come up behind a cop. You got to think of them as kind of like a scared raccoon or something. You don't want to come up behind them. You don't want to crowd around them. You don't want to run up on them, you know. We used to run and then get walking when we get close. But you, and, and if they, they'll tell you to back up, but they, the quick, the quick lesson, I guess, is they, there is no, like, speech. There's not like you have to be 23 feet from a cop or whatever. It's, it's just balance. You have the right to videotape and watch the cops, and they have this safety thing where they're allowed to say, well, you're making, this, this is unsafe for the, the team. So it's some balance. They can't have you go all the way to that corner because they feel unsafe. It has to be it has to be kind of reasonable, like where you where you can still see them, nice to be able to hear them too. And so what what oftentimes what'll happen is they'll be like, back up, and so we'll back up a little bit. We don't get real, we don't talk. We don't say anything. Um, on occasion we'll say we're just observing, you know. But we'll back up and then they'll say it again and maybe we'll back up a little step again. And usually at that point they're kind of control freaks. So usually by that point they either they want to deal with the situation they're dealing with more than carbon on us. of what, you know, the truth is or what you're allowed to do. You don't want to ask them. You just need to know you're right. And it's good that. And then not say anything. Don't ask advice from them. Don't ask advice from them. And if you do... What? The big Scotia truck. Oh, about the three technique, main techniques used by police to violate your rights. Sometimes people say these are three stages of police encounters or whatever, but after a few years of doing these trainings and thinking about it, you're like, no, actually, these are the three techniques that they use to violate your rights. And the first one is conversation. Hey, how you doing? Nice day. You know, where are you headed? You know, don't I know your, don't I know your brother? You see someone just conversation, just like seems like it's not, you know, no big deal. You don't feel like you're in trouble, nothing. Conversation, um, detention, and arrest. And we're gonna go into what all Yeah, I'm like, I'm 
Hey, so did you see a guy in a black sweatshirt run by there? How are you doing? You live around here? Hey, so can I see some ID, ma'am? See your bag. Um, what's your name, sir? Uh, James is my name. How are you doing tonight? Uh, we failed. <laughs> so, those are all techniques that lead to violating your rights. Conversation. A cop does not walk up to you to find out how you're doing. <laughs> they are not, that's not what they are working. So, we want to impart the wisdom to not treat it like anyone else that walks up to you and says, how you doing, or, hey, did you see my buddy, you know, so-and-so, or whatever. Um, you don't have to answer any of those questions. So Ruby got it, she didn't say it. But we're gonna, we're gonna actually teach the, the line to say when they do come up to you. So, conversation, you have no legal obligation to converse with cops. If you agree to talk to them, you will very likely the information they need to arrest you or prosecute you or someone else. So that doesn't mean when they ask you your name, that's what you're giving up. It's a process and they learn how to, that is what they do all day long. We cannot be so, we're so smart that we can out finesse them in this situation. Because that is what they are trained to do, is to get you going with them. Stay right there talking to them and then they get something that they want. Your best bet is to politely but firmly refuse to speak to them. Always make your refusal to speak to them clear in words as opposed to simply shaking your head. So we're going to talk about those words. Because we will also want to be always in solidarity with people who have are, are more easily targeted, say people who have, um, 